Well, well, well. Looks like we got something to talk about. Ah, this is Bike Spirits and Brews. Let's kick that intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we kick this one off, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. New videos starting today on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And well, today is a Monday, and uh, it's not a Grinds My Gears Friday, so uh, let's, let's go ahead and change that background. I know you're used to seeing the Grinds My Gears stuff when I talk about Roar Rock, but as you can see, I actually have a Roar Rock in house. So we are gonna check this out. Now, first and foremost, I have not opened this yet. It is not opened. So this is gonna be a first look. And then shortly after that, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna take it out for a couple rides and stuff. You know, this, this video is actually gonna take a few days. Uh, and then I'm gonna give you my first impressions on the helmet. Later on, I'm going to do more of a long-term review on it. Uh, actually, come June, I've got, I think towards the end of June, I've got a couple trips where I'm going to like Virginia and Georgia and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put like uh, probably about 3,000 miles on the helmet in a couple days. And uh, that's gonna be a good way to really test it because I'm gonna be living with it very long-term for that sort of stuff. Provide it, you know, everything goes well uh, after I crack this open. Let's check this out. I am quite excited to see this. I don't actually know. I've actually ignored a lot of the unboxing videos and stuff like that uh, because I kind of want to be surprised at what I saw. So, yeah. All right. So, first things first, I got my pen lock. Um, this is actually the uh, uh, chromatic pin lock, so it tints. Yeah, shockwave. It tints in the sunlight. The reason why I got this is because I normally ride a modular helmet. So when I have that helmet, it's kind of cool. I got the little slider on the side, you know, shade drops down. I'm not a huge, huge fan of like just changing visors all the time or carrying two visors. We'll see if that changes with the Roar Rock, but this is kind of, this is for me, so I can pop this onto my helmet on my visor, and I can actually have tint in the sun and, you know, not have to sweat it. So, we'll see. All right. Bloop. All right, so let's check out the helmet. I'm having all kinds of mic issues right now, so uh, that's why we've got all these weird cuts and stuff. So we've got the uh, Artiste inside. Looks pretty sweet. Come on. All right, here we go, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Clearly I'm organized and I do tons of unboxings. This, this, no other surprises in here, right? And real quick, before I show you the helmet, I'm gonna show you something that a lot of reviewers probably can't show you, and let alone have not shown you. That's my receipt. I paid for this stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. This is about as unbiased a review as possible. They didn't send this to me for free. This isn't something that like we made a deal on. I paid for this stuff. So that's how we're gonna do this. All right, let's see what we got here. That is the tinted visor. Nothing really special there because well, there's a sticker on there. Let's check out the actual helmet. Dude, I got piles of stuff going on here, man. So real quick, before we unbag this, um, I wanna say that Rorock uses three shell sizes for their helmets. So why is that important? It's important because not all companies use three. Some actually do use four, some use two when they're trying to be cheap. So what's that mean for you? Well, if you're using two helmet sizes, what that means is the entire like gamut of sizes, so extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 
there are only two different shell sizes. And to make it so it fits your head, they just put in thicker or thinner padding. So say like you're a large and they're only doing two helmet sizes, you're gonna get a 2X helmet with a whole bunch of padding in there and you're going to look like a bobblehead. It's just gonna happen. So you wanna find those companies that use like three or four shell sizes. That's, that's a very important thing to have. So without further ado, let's check this out. Oh yeah, Crimson. <laughs> Um, you know, right away, I gotta tell you, I really, I like the paint. It looks cool. I can see, like with my ring light and stuff, the way it's hitting it, I'm definitely getting different shades of red and stuff. So that's really cool. I'm willing to bet the video is not gonna fully give this justice. I've seen these things in like different YouTube videos and stuff like that, and I couldn't tell that you know the 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 paint just looks this cool it actually looks like it's got a little bit of fleck in it so you know it's got that sparkle <laughs> uh let's check this out so one of the things that the new Rorock did is they got rid of the butt plugs if you've ever watched my grinds my gears videos on these put it right there for you You'll know that I did take credit for that, even though I'm pretty sure that they just, you know, advanced enough where they stopped putting them in. So they've got like their open and close vent here. It's definitely kind of hard to switch back and forth. Ah, that's not too bad. Probably just needs a break in. It's new. That's what's going to happen. There's another one in here. Yeah, I can feel it. That opens and closes the mouth. So, you know, you've got your venting. That's cool. Sweet. Now, one of the things that I thought was strange, and then I talked to uh, my buddy Chopper Fett about it, I wasn't quite sure how these helmets were gonna work. Because when you order one of these helmets, you'll see that like, for example, I ordered a 2X. This is actually an XL slash 2X. And I was like, okay, are they just gonna throw all the padding in like the box and I just switch it around like a Mr. Potato Head, what's going on? So actually the padding inside, which we may get to very shortly, um, unzips and you can take out a layer and actually make it a little thinner. And I think that's actually kind of genius. It's, it really is. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this on. I'm assuming that this is going to be in the extra large, um, configuration at this point. All right, let's try this out. Oh God, it's like a birth canal. Nice, yeah, man. Cool. Cool. Ugh. You know, I don't think I'm gonna have to remove uh, any padding. Uh, that feels pretty snug. There's a lot of room around the ears, so I'm probably gonna put this in for now. So it feels pretty good, weight-wise and all that stuff. It feels like it has good construction, like definitely no complaints there. I'm digging this. We're not really gonna take it all apart just yet. You know, I definitely wanna ride with it and stuff and not go crazy with it right out the gate. But uh, yeah, so now you've seen the helmet. Let's see the helmet on the bike and let's see what we come up with. So let's go. All right, guys, we are on the road with the Roar Rock Atlas 4.0, finally. Uh, the rain has let up, the sun is out. It's a little over 70 degrees out. And I am taking the same road that I used for my last review on the last helmet that didn't work out so well, but this this review is all about the Rorock, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I had mentioned before that I normally use a modular helmet, and with a modular, you usually get a built-in drop-down visor. Rorock doesn't have that option. It's also not modular, so this isn't something that I am taking points away from them on. It's it's more than understandable. Um, so I do have the pin lock in. It is the chromatic one that 
darkens for sunlight. Come on, people. So if the lens looks tinted right now, just know that I actually do have the clear lens in, but I have the $99.99 uh, pin lock in that darkens for sunlight. So far, it's working pretty good, I will say that. I mean, I can tell things are darker. I don't know exactly how dark it gets. We're not riding into the sun. Um, I'm hoping the sound is gonna be good. I did take a brand new Purple Panda microphone, which is what I use in my other helmets. And I put a little Velcro on it and I placed it exactly where Rorock plate um, has their little Velcro dot for the place that they want you to mount a mic. So far, I will say, um, this helmet's really quiet. It really is. Um, it's actually quieter than my modular. I had some worries because with my modular, it used to be a little bit louder. I have done work to it. Uh, I've added extra padding and basically made it so the padding is like cupping my ears. When I got this Roar Rock, there's, there's a lot of room around the ears. There's a lot of space. I did put in the little foam inserts that come with the helmet, but even those, you know, it doesn't touch my ears. I have space around my ears, and that's pretty cool. I thought that that space was going to cause a lot of noise. So far, the helmet has been fairly quiet. Now, we are going to get on the highway. We're going to do a little bit of highway riding just to see how the sound is there as well. I can actually hear myself very well. Uh, that was an issue in previous helmets that I've reviewed where even driving around the city, I found myself speaking up because the helmet was louder. So, you know, it's that effect like when you're, when you're at a concert or something and the band's playing, you're yelling instead of talking. So while we're going slower, um, I'm gonna crack the visor. That was another issue I had with the other helmet was that even doing like 20, 30 miles an hour, the visor would not stay cracked. This one clicks into place very effectively. It is, it is very firm. So I really do not have a, a fear of this visor closing whatsoever. So yeah, that is just great. The, the one thing I will say that I'm sure I'll get over over time is right here you know obviously the visor dips up a little bit so you could definitely see that in your eye line especially when the visor is cracked open like this just because it's the edge of the visor that's styling on the helmet though I'm not gonna hold that against the helmet um, I know some other reviews have talked about this bridge like this nose bridge kind of making it hard to look down honestly i always kind of look down anyway i tend to like i'm taller so my gauges are never eye line for me so this this really isn't anything i'm going to complain about i will say the helmet has a really good fit um i i was a little bit worried that i thought i was gonna actually I took my head measurements after I ordered the largest helmet and I definitely measured incorrectly at some point. At least one of the head measurements I took um, said that this helmet would not even fit me. And instead, this helmet fit me right out of the box. As I mentioned before, uh, I was a little perplexed as to how they were selling like an extra large, two extra large helmet together it was just a helmet and that's because if the helmet's too tight you just go into the padding and you remove like a layer of the padding and then it becomes a 2x all the padding has little zipper pouches so it's very accessible you're not going in there with like a box cutter or something like doing some crazy surgery on your new $400 helmet or five six whatever you paid for it so that's not a that's not a worry at all um, I have my glasses on today 
I do normally bounce back and forth between glasses and contacts. For those of you who do wear glasses, um, the channels on the side are, are really good. Um, my glasses slide right in there, no problem. Actually, on my modular, it's a little bit harder to get my glasses in there and to get them to sit comfortably on my face. They actually, um, they tend to like tilt and lean and stuff like that. And that helmet is designed for people with glasses. It does have that channel. So um, yeah, this one being as easy as it is, makes me very happy. I, I'm good with that. I, I am totally down with that. The, the vent up top, let's see, let's try it out right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can open it and close it with these gloves. It is a little hard to do. I have my mechanics gloves on in case you're wondering. Um, it is a little hard to do right now, but that I'm chalking up to the fact that it's brand new. Things are going to be stiff. You want them to be stiff. You don't want crap just sliding all around. I have this vent closed right now. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this vent because the the switch for it is inside underneath here. So you got to kind of like get in there or go in from the top to open or close it. This is fine if you don't open and close your vent a lot. Like if you're somebody who's like set it and forget it. For me personally, I tend to leave it closed because I'm usually talking to you guys. Um, but you know, if there's a time that you want to crack it open, it's not easily accessible when you're on the road. The other thing, and it's it's more of a nitpick thing, um, this little vi this little tab here to open up the visor, perfectly fine, works great, no complaints. Uh, with my modular, I actually have one here, and I have one here. I really like that because I'm not always opening or closing my visor with my left hand. So with this one, it's uh, like I get the science behind it. I get like why they do it. Your throttle hand is over here on the right. So in theory, you're not taking your hand off the throttle to open and close your visor. However, when I'm parked, when I'm sitting in traffic, when I'm at a red light, when I'm cruising, when like cruise control is on, you know, stuff like that, I do find myself using my right hand a lot to open and close my visor. It would be very cool if they put one of these over here, just balanced it out. Plus, it would make my OCD feel better. So, yeah, you know, uh, Row Rock, if you're listening, one over here. Come on, hook a brother up. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten over to the highway. Let's uh, hop on the highway and get a little bit louder and see how we do. Part of this whole thing. I'm honestly not going to be able to tell you for sure until uh, I get back home and I edit the video because I'm not going to be able to tell if the mic is popping or not now. Uh, for those of you not aware, oh. for those of you not aware, when your microphone's popping and stuff, it's just because there is so much sound coming into your helmet. So much wind, so much just everything that it's just completely overloaded. So like when I did my last helmet review, right now, uh, I'm doing 60. Right now, the sound was so loud, I was kind of like yelling into the mic. And I could tell when I went back and did my review because the mic was popping bad. Um, it sounded like I was going deaf. Now, the helmet has gotten a little bit louder, but still really comfortable. Uh, I, I am honestly surprised at how comfortable the sound level is. This is quieter than my modular. And like I said, I've done work to my modular. This is legit quiet. And I think you can kind of tell that as well just by my voice. It has gotten louder, but I'm not like 
I'm not yelling, I'm not shouting, I'm not trying to like, you know, get over like the wind noise or anything like that. So I can't speak for older Roar Rocks, but I have heard that, you know, they are quite loud. This one, it is not the case whatsoever. This is great. I am, a lot of my fears for Roar Rock are quickly being squashed because the sound is good. All right, let's hop off here and see where we're going. I'll be curious to go back and watch the camera too and actually see how dark this lens has gotten because the sun is shining right now. So I think I've got pretty close to maximum at this point. Um, one of the other things I didn't like, it's more of an aesthetic thing and I'm going to be fixing it is if you look at the sides of the helmet here you kind of see all the the gears and stuff through the clear part on the uh, lens now when you're when you're wearing the tinted lens you can't see that stuff it's not there uh, obviously but with the clear one I, I don't like the look it just shows too much I would have liked if this back here was blackened um, I actually ordered some carbon fiber vinyl wrap that's going to be in tomorrow and I'm gonna put that on the back edges just to kind of clean that up a little bit and uh, you know just make it what will be in my opinion look better um, but yeah this this is cool I I'll definitely carry the tinted lens I'll throw it in my road case in case I'm like riding and it's just like I'm riding only in the day and it's crazy bright but honestly this this lens will probably be my go-to just because it tints it stops tinting it does what I need to do while I'm riding and I can make long trips I'm not a big fan of unhooking the visor hooking up a new visor I don't like switching back and forth on stuff I'm, I'm very much a set it and forget it sort of guy when it comes to stuff like this. So if this lens works out in the way that it seems to be working out, this will probably be my super go-to lens. I know all of you at home that have ordered like, or are planning to order like 10 different lenses for your Roar Rock are probably like, oh, you suck, whatever that's, I don't care. This is cool. This is good. I like it. There, there's only so much I can really really tell you right now because it's a short trip and I'm not gonna lie to you and I'm not gonna make things up and and I don't want to go crazy on like you know um, a review like sitting there going oh my god it's the greatest thing since sliced bread this is a really good helmet so far and I'm really really digging it good on you guys Roar Rock. you did a good job so one of the little tidbits of information I will give you guys that I've been told is okay to share with you is Roar Rock does not have the intention of putting out a 5.0 on the schedule that they've been doing for the 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so if you're on the fence about buying this helmet, but you're saying, oh, well, you know, we're already like halfway through the calendar year, I'll just wait for the 5.0 to come out. Um, they're really happy with how the 4.0 has turned out so now they're gonna slow down a bit and start making uh, more incremental updates probably spaced out a little bit more so there's a there's a very fair chance like he didn't want to give me a definitive yes or no but there's a very fair chance that there will not be a Roar Rock Atlas 5.0 in 2023. So I'm sure you'll see more colorways and styles, maybe maybe a few helmets without teeth on them, um, you know, stuff like that, but not a 5.0. That's another thing I want to bring up, actually when I'm thinking about it. I, I love this color. This color is great. And um, the camera's not gonna do this uh, color justice no matter what I do the camera is not going to do this helmet justice um, you, you definitely see a lot of different stuff 
when this camera is out in the light it um it, it has like maybe a little metal fleck in it um it definitely like it, it kind of shifts color a little bit depending on which angle you've got it in so yeah it it does not do it justice however because it's a matte color oh man this thing attracts fingerprints <laughs> and marks and stuff so damn easily <laughs> like it's it's kind of crazy honestly i would love to see uh Rorock put out this exact same helmet but throw a clear coat on it just to make it a little bit more like you know fingerprints and stuff won't stand out as much as they do right now but overall past that i mean like this this color is awesome i'm really really digging this and i'll probably run with this one until raw rock finally makes my mercury crimson helmet that i keep demanding that they make look guys it's a money maker make it happen i get the first one you're welcome <laughs> that's uh that's about it on that one so the last thing i'll talk about on this review is uh the shape of the helmet i don't know if you can fully notice it but it's almost an egg shape it's um like an upside down egg shape and the reason for that is actually um it makes the helmet stronger in an impact so guys that's really all i've got for the uh road test on this for the time being definitely check back around uh, early july like i said i do plan to have some much longer rides and i'm also going to do much many more rides with this helmet the one thing that's going to slow it down right now is i ordered the new cardo edge at the same time that i ordered this and cardo has been a bit on back order getting that out so when that arrives this will become more of my full-time helmet because then i'll be able to use it when i'm riding with like dave and meg and you know everyone else that has a calm on but i will be setting this up very very soon to be my moto vlog helmet without a doubt i did order the little chin mount from um Rorock as well so that'll be going on i just want to test it without that first and uh yeah let's uh let's go back to the dungeon and uh let's let's wrap up this video with a few more thoughts and uh a little bit more of the review shall we see you guys over there all right guys so we're back uh we did the test ride yesterday had a little bit of time to just kind of like you know let everything kind of set in my brain and you know make my decisions and all that um, I would love to, you know, give Raw Rock crap. It's it's fun to mess around with them and stuff. You know, it's the but they are a good good bunch over there. They they take everything like you know I've I've kind of tossed at them very very tongue in cheek and that is very cool of them. Um, once again, bought and paid for though. Uh, this is not a free helmet to me. So this really is an honest review. If this was a bad helmet. Um, the first thing that would have happened is I would have reached out to Rare Rock and said, hey, um, this helmet sucks. I would just like a refund so we could both go our separate ways. And then if they said no to that, then yes, there would have been a bad review or, you know, something along those lines. Not the case. It, it's a good helmet. I'm really digging it. I really like the color. The color is awesome. So some of the things that I don't really care for and you know again this is just personal preference and stuff like to change the visor you've got to like do these little twist knobs here and stuff like that I'm used to my modular helmet where there's actually just triggers here and they just pop off so there's less pieces less things that can go wrong again that's just personal preference um, I know I mentioned it on the bike but the vent for the open close vent here is on the inside of the helmet this one's a little stiff right now, but I'm sure that's going to loosen up just fine. Um, the venting on this helmet was really good. The weight feels nice. I'm not going to try and compare it on scales and stuff because with my modular helmet, it, it weighs a ton. It's, it's got the Cardo Slim on it. It's got 
all my GoPro stuff on it, you know, things like that. And I'm going to be adding the GoPro stuff to this as well. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to testing that out and just kind of seeing how everything works. I went back and reviewed the videos from yesterday and there were some like small pops in there and stuff, nothing too crazy. And I will say that for that, that's kind of on me because on, on my other helmet, I have an actual dead cat on my microphone. With this one, I just used like the little foam tip mic that um, came with my Purple Panda. So I will throw an actual dead cat on there and I will like test it out again. But overall, I mean, the sound was really, really solid, especially being that there was no dead cat. I was on the highway. There were times I did hit like 70 and above, like I was bouncing around there. And uh, the sound itself on the helmet was really good. Um, if I was to say who this helmet is not for, I would say it's probably not for people that need a helmet right now. Unless, of course, you have a very small head or you have like a desire to get one of the designs that might not be as popular. If you go to like the Roar Rock website, you're gonna see that a lot of the larger sizes, I, I wanna say from like large, 2x and i think maybe mediums and stuff depending on the the model or the the colorway that you're looking at are unavailable and they'll be unavailable for a few months honestly i ordered this um i think like march 2nd or something and i just got it like maybe a week ago and uh right now it's um like may <laughs> so that's quite a bit of time especially when i could just walk into like a cycle gear or something pull a helmet off a shelf and there we go, I've got my helmet. If you have a shell right now that you're wearing and you're not in a huge, huge rush and you don't mind waiting a little bit, this is, it's a good investment. It's a good helmet, I, I dig it. Um, I would say that this helmet is for people that want something that looks a little bit different. And it's easy to think that Roar Rock is absolutely everywhere in like the motorcycle sphere and all that stuff if you're in like the raw rock environment like you know the the facebook groups the instagram and stuff like that because you're seeing that huge concentration but i can tell you like since raw rock came out especially in like my area of the northeast I, I look around i've maybe seen one or two of these in the wild so it's not like you're gonna buy this and then you and 500 other dudes are gonna be hanging out at Starbucks all comparing the exact same helmet. You can do that with your Harleys. So you're all set there. I see you street glide riders. <laughs> Aside from that, that's really all I got for the review right now. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put some miles on this helmet. I'm going to put a comm on it. I'm going to put all the GoPro stuff on there and I will give you a more long-term review most likely around the July time, because like I said, at, at that point, I'm going to have, you know, upwards of like five, 6,000 miles or something. I'm going to spend a lot of time in this helmet for the next month or two, so I can really give a much more thorough and fleshed out review come July time. But this is just my initial response to it. So yeah, Rorock, good on you. This thing is cool. Um, I am looking forward to replacing it though with my uh, Mercury Crimson helmet that you're going to make for me. Looking at you. <laughs> but until then, uh, I, I can see uh, myself putting many, many miles on this helmet and I'm quite excited to do it. So for the rest of you guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this video with friends, share it with family, Share with that one dude you know who really wants to get a, a pretty solid helmet that looks pretty cool. Loves this stuff, trust me. See you all on the flip side.